Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. We're glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. Today is the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. In our service today, we're going to look at the blessings we have in God and how these things give us a reason for joy, happiness, and confidence in our lives. So we'll begin then with the singing of the first hymn. will rise. And we'll follow this morning the service of the word. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, we're on page 38. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, Have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. 
In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, keep your family, the church, always faithful to you, that we may lean on the hope of your promises and be strong in the power of your love. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson today is written in the seventh chapter of the book of Micah. We start with verse 7. We'll read selected verses. He says, But as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God my Savior. My God will hear me. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. You will be true to Jacob and show mercy to Abraham as you pledged on oath to our fathers in days long ago. So far, the Old Testament lesson. We'll join together in singing Psalm 103. If you'd like to follow in the hymnal, we're on page 105.
Our epistle lesson today is written in the sixth chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. We start with verse 1 and read selected verses. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else, for each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, even to the Israel of God. So far, the epistle lesson. Alleluia. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Alleluia. We'll rise for the Gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the 8th chapter of St. Luke. We start with verse 4. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, but then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy, but when they hear it, they have no root. They believe for a while but in time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. So far the gospel. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn.
will rise. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. The words of God will consider on this, the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord, are written in the ninth chapter of the book of Jeremiah. We start with verse 23. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight, declares the Lord. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of the Lord, who is the one true God and who is our God by grace, dear friends in Christ. She wants to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. She's determined to make it. She's going to do what it takes to get there. Her name is Susanne Eamon. She's 32 years old, and she lives in Casa Grande, Arizona. And the world record that she wants to set is this. She wants to be the heaviest woman in the world. Now, the, the record now for the heaviest woman in the world is held by someone in California. It's 643 pounds. Now, Suzanne Eamon claims that she already is 730 pounds. <clears throat> and she has a plan. By her early 40s, she wants to weigh 1,600 pounds. And it's her long-term goal to see if a human being could ever reach one ton. Eventually, she wants to weigh 2,000 pounds. And to do this, she eats 22,000 calories a day. It's incredible. So what are you thinking right now? This is probably going to kill her. And you wonder, why? Why is it so important to set that record? I mean, you ever do that? You, you see some of the things that people do, and some of them are just downright dangerous. Some of them, they truly risk their lives to try to accomplish. And you wonder, why? Why are they trying to do these things, eh? Well, there are millions upon millions upon millions of people who are trying to find something. They're trying to find some reason so that they can feel good about themselves, so that they can have a certain measure of confidence as they go through this life. And for those millions upon millions upon millions of people who are looking for those things, almost always they're trying to find something in themselves, okay? Something that they can do, or something that they can have, or something that they can become. All so that they can feel good about themselves have something that will give them confidence in their lives. For instance, uh, some people look at intelligence that way, that if I can be really smart, exceptionally smart, smarter than most other people, then I can feel good about myself because, well, other people will most likely notice me, they'll think well of me, in fact, they might even want to have me around because, oh, boy, we could 
You can help us because you're smart. If we play a trivia game, we want you on our team. If we have a problem, we can go to you because you know so many things, so you'll be able to help us. And then confidence. I can take care of myself because I'm smart. People aren't going to take advantage of me because I can see through things. I'm smart, so I can get a really good job and I'll make lots of money. I'm smart, so I'll be able to take care of things in life and I will be a success. <clears throat> Another one is money, right? Uh, people think sometimes that if I have lots and lots and lots of money, then I'll feel good about myself, right? Other people, if they know how much money I have, uh, will think I'm important. Uh, they may want to uh, have me as a friend. Uh, people will look to me sometimes because I'll be able to help them because I have lots of money. And if I have lots of money, I can be confident as I go through life because I'll be able to get what I want. I'll be able to do most of the things that I want. I'll be secure because I've got lots of money to take care of myself. Okay? Again, millions upon millions upon millions of people looking for something to feel good about, something to give them confidence. And more often than not, they look to something in themselves or something in this world, something they can have, something they can do, something they can become. And what does the Lord say? Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. Don't look for those earthly things as the reason for you to feel good about yourself, to think that you're special and important, or to give you confidence as you live your life. Don't look to those earthly things. And why? Well, for one thing, those, those earthly things don't truly give you any guarantees, right? Just because a person is incredibly smart, that doesn't mean they know everything. That doesn't mean they can control everything. That doesn't mean they can always make sure things go the way that they want. Just because they might have a lot of money more money than they know what to do with. That doesn't mean, again, that they can control everything. That's no guarantee that everything is going to go the way that they want. That's no guarantee that they're always going to have people who will think they're important so they can feel good about themselves. There's no guarantee life is going to go and things in this world are going to go the way that they want so that they can have what they want in this life. Just because people are strong and have great abilities, again, that's no guarantee that they're going to be able, to, again, to control things and get things always to be the way that they want them to be. Some of you might remember, oh, the name Bruce Lee. He was a martial arts person. Uh, some consider him to be the greatest of all time. Worked out incessantly, strong. They said that in films, they actually had to slow down the films because he was so fast. Uh, considered in that sense invincible when fighting other people. 32 years old, at his absolute best, and what happens? Takes medication, has an allergic reaction, and is dead at 32 years old. Just because we have these things, there's no guarantee that we're always going to have life the way that we want life to be. And again, these things ultimately fall short, they ultimately end, right? Just because you're a genius at 20, there's no guarantee that you're not going to get Alzheimer's when you're 70. A person might be the fastest man in the world at 25, and they can be in a wheelchair at 80. People can have these things, but none of them go with you when you die. No guarantees, and you've probably seen it, you've probably read about some of the people who have the most money, the most fame, uh, the most power, they can do all these great things, and yet many of them are the most unhappy people in the world. No guarantees with these things. And then, of course, these, these earthly things that people sometimes look to, wisdom, strength, power, intelligence, 
great abilities, money, fame, lots of earthly things. None of those things help you with what's most important in your life, right? And how many times haven't we said it? The single most important thing in your life is your relationship with God. And earthly wisdom, strength, power, intelligent, intelligence, great abilities, money, fame, lots of earthly possessions. Well, when you stand before God and he's deciding what to do with you, none of those things are going to help you in the least. There's always that reminder. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom or the strong man boast of his strength or the rich man boast of his riches. You can't count on these things to feel good about yourself all the time. You can't count on these things to always be giving you something so you can have confidence in your life. You can't count on these things to control what goes on in the world. You can't count on those things so that you will always be happy, healthy, and successful in life. In the end, there's only one absolute constant, right? The Lord, the Lord who says, I am that I am. The one who's always there, the one who controls all things. And what are we told? Let him who boasts, boast about this, that he knows, or that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord. The Lord, God's divine name there, that he is the God of free and faithful grace, that he is the God who controls all things, that he is the God who gives us true meaning in our life, that he is the God who truly gives us blessings, the greatest blessings, the most important blessings of all, that give us a true reason to feel good, to be happy, to rejoice, and to be confident. Again, let him who boasts boast about this, that he knows or that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. The Lord is the one who is in control of all things. The Lord who operates according to both law and gospel, right? He mentions justice and righteousness. We know what God demands, eh? That we be perfect at all times, that we always follow his will, and if we have our sins, then a just God says there has to be payment for those sins, right? A just God isn't going to let them go, but he's still a God of kindness, right? And that's the same word that sometimes is translated as mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It emphasizes God's faithful love, the love that moves him to take action to help people in need, we who are in need. Eh? To take action, of course, by sending his son, who did all that was necessary so that sin has been paid for. Because of what Jesus has done, you are forgiven, you're righteous in God's sight, you're just right for God. And because in God's sight you have no sin, you've done what's right, there's only one right thing for a just God to do, to declare you not guilty, to not treat you as your sins deserve, but to always guide you in your life and always bless you. In the Lord Jesus, again, we have the greatest and most important blessings of all. Blessings that we can always count on, regardless of what happens in our lives. I can feel good about this, that I am a forgiven child of God, that I am right in God's sight, righteous, that God is with me, that God loves me. The most important entity in the entire universe loves me, cares about me, wants to guide me and bless me, that God listens to me when I talk to him. He gives me a say in how he runs the world, guiding me, helping me, making sure that I am always blessed in the way that he knows is best and knowing that one day I'm going to be perfect and I'm going to live in his glorious presence for all eternity. Those are things that I can truly be glad about. Let him who boasts, boasts in this. That's why I can feel good about being me, because I'm a child of God. I know the Lord. That's why I can have true confidence as I go through life. Not because maybe I'm smart or can do things, but because the Lord is my God, and the Lord will always guide me and take care of me. 
And I may not have things that the world considers important, the things that so many people put their confidence in, that so many people want to boast about, that make them think they're important or feel important or think other people should think they're important. I may not have billions and billions of dollars. I may not be the smartest person on the planet. I may not do things that other people just go, wow, isn't that incredible? I may not ever be in any kind of book of records, right? When I die, some people will remember me, but for the most part, I'll be lost in that sea of history where billions and billions of other people are. I probably won't do things that people are going to remember after I die and think, wow, wasn't that incredible? In fact, I look at my life and I see things that you know, I'm not especially proud of, things that don't make me feel very good about myself because I have my sins, my failings, things that I wish now I had never done. There's no reason for people to praise me for being so great because I'm sinful just as they are. And yet, what do I know? My Savior has taken away those sins. He's paid for them completely. And with God's help, I can let go of the past memories of my sins, give them to the Lord and know they've been dealt with and know that God looks at me as righteous and perfect and I can feel good about that. I can feel good as a forgiven child of God knowing that I am loved even though I haven't been perfect that God cares about me even though at times I've let him down, knowing that, again, he guides me and helps me in all things, always working for my good. That, again, I can feel good about that. I can be confident because of that. And it can happen that the Lord does give you certain blessings, maybe things that other people do notice. Uh, maybe he does give you a certain amount of intelligence. He allows you to do some things in an extra special way. And people may notice those things and praise you because of them. The Lord may give you a certain amount of wealth. And you may be able to live in a certain amount of comfort. Is it wrong to feel good about those things? Not necessarily. Is it wrong maybe to have some confidence because of those things? Again, not necessarily, as long as you remember what's most important and why you have these things, right? We can enjoy these earthly blessings and feel good about them as long as that's not the most important thing that I count on, the, the foundation, the thing that is most important to me for feeling good, for being glad, for being confident in this life. And it's easy to do that. You get these things and you have success sometimes with these things and it's easy to start thinking you're pretty hot stuff because look at what I have and look at what I can do. It's easy to start thinking, yeah, I can take, I can handle anything because I'm smart, I have abilities, I have money or whatever. Maybe a question to ask yourself, something that's really important to you, something that you do feel good about, something that, yeah, makes give you a little bit of confidence. What would happen if that was taken away from you and somehow? If you didn't have it anymore, would your life fall apart? Would you feel like I've got no reason to be happy anymore? Would you think I can't go on because I don't have this anymore? And in some cases, what do people actually do? They don't have this earthly thing that made them feel so good, and so some of them think, do I even want to go on living anymore? That's when we've got to keep in mind what's truly important in life. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. Let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness 
on earth, for in these I delight. To always remember what's most important and to always remember that I have what's most important because by grace I know the Lord. I've been brought to saving faith and I have the greatest blessings of all. Regardless of what my station might be in life, regardless of what my mistakes might be, regardless of what other people think, they might be praising me, they might be against me. And none of those things in the end are really important. The Lord, the one true God, loves me. He's saved me from my sins. He's made me righteous in his sight. He guides me, he loves me, he listens to me, he's with me, he's blessing me, and he's going to give me life that's going to be perfect and last forever. Thinking of that, I can feel good. Be glad to be me because I am a child of God. I can be confident because of that, that simple fact. By God's grace, I know the Lord. I am his child. He is my God who loves me and gives me the greatest blessings of all. I can feel good about that. I can be confident because of that. Amen. And we'll rise. <clears throat> And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we'll join in confessing our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, we read, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the offering. As we gather it, we'll sing the posted hymn verses.
will rise and will join in the response of prayer. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. We offer a special prayer this morning, Lord, first of all, for Darlene Heipel, who is hospitalized. We ask, Lord, that you would use your almighty power to grant her healing and enable her to return to her home soon. We ask that you would keep her faith strong, help her to be clinging all the more to your promises, that she can have that confidence that you love her and are with her and that you will take care of her. We also pray, for, Lord, for... Marion Flitter, whose mother passed away this week, and for Eileen Anderson, whose mother also passed away recently. We ask, Lord, that you would give comfort to them and their families. Help them, Lord, to look to you in gratitude for the blessings you gave to their mothers throughout their life, for especially bringing them to faith, keeping them in the faith, and for now giving them the joys of heaven. Please, Lord, help them to cling to your promises Help them to know that one day we will be together again in heaven where we will be never separated. Please, Lord, for all of us, help us always to keep one eye looking ahead, knowing that the glories of heaven will more than make up for whatever pains or sorrows we experience in this life. Please, Lord, keep us faithful to you always. Hear us now as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. <laughs> Hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn. <clears throat>
will rise. And we will pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for making us your children through faith in your Son, Jesus. We thank you for all the blessings we have because we are your sons and daughters in Christ. We ask, Lord, that, we would, that you would help us so that we look to you always, find our true joy and perfect confidence in you, your love, and your promises. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here together with our fellow Christians. Please go with us as we leave this house of worship. Help us to be light shining in this world so that with our lives we honor you and truly are a blessing to others. Please keep us safe in your care, and if it is your will, allow us to be together again for worship. We pray this to you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the final hymn. Good morning once again. Thank you for being with us today. We're glad you're here. Special welcome to those who are visitors here with us today. We're glad you're here. We pray God's word you heard would be a blessing for your life. Please sign our guest book, and if you'd like, we'll give you a visitor packet that'll give you more information about our church. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, for the Sunday school kids, when, when we're dismissed, please go as you normally do to your classes. We're not going to have music today, but we are going to come back, and we'll have the kids' connection that they, that they watch every month. And then being that there's no music, uh, Sunday school, Bible class, we're all going to end a little bit early today, probably about 11 o'clock. Uh, this afternoon, we have our, our Bible information class. We're continuing on that, if you'd like to join us. Going on through the week, uh, we will not have a Jesus Cares Bible class on Monday because it's a, because it's a holiday. And then regular, um, regular activities on Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, I'll be at a pastor's conference in Pierre, and we're going to try something new on March 12th. It's on page 9 in the bulletin. We're going to have our first ever chili cook-off. If you like to make chili, we invite you to make a big batch of it. We're going to 
set them all out and everyone can sample them and then they can vote on which one they think is the tastiest, which one is the hottest, uh, whatever. So we'll do that and then once the contest is done, then we'll just eat till our heart's content of the chili that's there and we'll have some other things too. So if you'd like to join us for that, uh, there's a sign-up sheet uh, on the bulletin table and there's another sheet that gives you information about that. I think those are the announcements we'd want to share with you this morning. Thank you for being with us today. Good morning, and God bless you.